Hello, welcome to Ready for Mistakes. I'm Jeff Smoody, a photography-based artist from Illinois. This is a photography podcast where I talk to artists about their work and their ideas. Thank you for listening, and I really hope you enjoy this conversation. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day it is, you know what's going on. Welcome to another episode of Ready for Mistakes. We're nearing the end of the year already, and it's been pretty exciting getting all these interviews out for you guys. Um, It's been really wonderful being able to talk to such wonderful artists and getting to know their work. Um, And of course, today is no exception to that matter. Um, I got to talk to uh, Vincent Galimi for this episode, who is an artist from Chicagoland, and of course, being one of my favorite areas of the country, I'm always going to be a little bit biased in favor of any talk that has anything to do with Chicago. To kind of get things rolling in today's episode with all the housekeeping kind of things, um, of course, if you guys didn't get a chance to go listen to um, the interview I had with Levi Hemphill, definitely go give it a listen. It was a lot of fun to talk to him, get to know his work. Of course, him being the first international, uh, international interviewee was a really fun time. So, yeah, uh, to kind of get a little bit more housekeeping out of the way, just right off the bat, um, there is one more interview for this year um, that is going to be also my first in-person one uh, in a long time uh, that uh, you guys will be hearing. um, I think it's supposed to come out the week before Christmas, or I think it's the Friday right before Christmas. Um, And then I have my usual goals slash year in review after that. So that's kind of the main thing that I'm up against for the show for the rest of the year. Um, And I hope you guys will enjoy what's coming up, you know? Um, Anyway, uh, I'll quickly read off a bio about uh, Vincent Galimi, um, just so you guys can uh, get a good foundation for who he is as an artist. Uh, Vincent Galimi is a photographer from the suburbs of Chicago and received his BFA in photography from the University of Illinois at Chicago. He's been published in Subjectively Objective, including their books Everything is Narrative and Investigations in Infrastructure. He was featured in Boom, you know, that one that has seven O's in it, um, and Zone Magazine's volume number one, Ain't Bad, volume 14, Um, has been exhibited at the Southeast Center for Photography, Photo Place Gallery, the Center for Fine Art Photography, and the Kiernan Gallery, as well as many others. His work focuses on observations in the American landscape through his personal lens with an interest in the American dream, society, and belief. So in the episode, we talk quite a lot about those three different things, those projects that he has that kind of fit into those three different categories of American dream, American society, and American belief. Um, it's really quite cool seeing how they very organically flow into each other. So I hope you guys will enjoy hearing about his whole thought process and history behind all that and what was going on in the world at large that influenced his own personal Um, attempt at understanding these things. Um, To go with that, like I said before, I'm biased in in favor of anything that has to do with Chicago. Uh, We do have a very important conversation, though brief, about something that's commonly misunderstood, and that is Chicago pizza. I'll just let you know, it's very important. If you believe that Chicago pizza is exclusively deep dish, you gotta you gotta stick around for that conversation. It's very important for you to listen to. Um, anyway, yeah, it's really a uh, really great great conversation. It's a little bit longer. Without anything else to update you guys on, um, I hope you guys will enjoy this episode, this conversation that I had with Vincent Galimi. Hey, Vincent, thank you so much for coming on the show. How is it going? Hey, Jeff, it's going good. Thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Like I've been doing with the past few guests, um, I've been asking everyone about their their kind of origin story, how you first got started in art. Um, tell me about, in as many words as you want, um, about how you got into photography. So, so yeah, my my origin story is uh, kind of starts with drawing mostly. Um, I've uh, grown up in the suburbs of Chicago my entire life, and I've always been interested in in drawing. Like my dad drew a little bit, and his brother as well. Um, my dad was also very interested in like uh, 
he's a, a model maker and he would do like dioramas and stuff. So we always kind of had like art in our family, at least uh, uh, not not traditional like fine art, but art of some sense in our family. And and so I started drawing when I was much younger, uh, probably like kindergarten, second grade. And then I, I let go of that for a while. And then uh, once high school came around, I had a really great art teacher there, um, kind of got me back into it. And I followed that into college, uh, drawing and painting. I thought that was going to be my focus. Um, but it ended up being actually at the end of my uh, couple years at College of DuPage, which is a community college uh, here in Illinois. Uh, I found photography. Shout out to College of DuPage. Yeah, right. Yeah. COD. I think we, we call it a UCLA, which is a university closest to Lombard area, which is uh, is also. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I, I found photography there actually through a couple friends because I was big into BMX when I was younger as well, all throughout college. And, and I like photography was always kind of around me, but I never pursued it because I was so focused on drawing. And then I found that, oh, I could take a picture of, of the thing that I really want to draw. And it was, it was there already. Like I already had it. Um, so that was really, that was really just like an, like a, a really eye opening experience. Like I was able to instantly create like the thing that I was thinking about that took me, you know, like hours or, you know, days or whatever to draw or paint. So um, I never put that together, but then I, uh, so, and then my aunt got me, uh, my first digital camera. It was a Nikon D8 or a D50. And then, yeah, I just never turned back and just been shooting ever since. And I got my, uh, bachelor's in fine arts from, uh, the university of Illinois at Chicago. Uh, and, and yeah, just been, I, <clears throat> I have a day job still, uh, but my, uh, I do shoot like events and weddings sometimes, but my main focus outside of uh, work is is definitely my, you know, my body of work that I've been working towards uh, since. Actually, I feel like I shoot. I've been shooting more since uh, college than than I did during. <laughs> Crazy how that works sometimes. Yeah, my my experience with uh, post college photography was always kind of interesting because right after I graduated from Illinois State. I hit the ground running. I started working at a newspaper in central Illinois. It was this like weird time of like being 22 years old, 22, 23, just like figuring out what the hell I'm doing while working a day job, also taking pictures. But yeah, I mean, that's I think that's something that a lot of um, younger artists that get a degree in anything art related kind of have that same kind of feeling. It's like you have that rigid structure in college and you know if you choose to go to an mfa program you kind of get that same thing again it's what i'm currently going through mm. um but other than that um so thinking about um how your work has been going over the years i first came across your work in uh books that you and i are both actually in uh which is the subjectively objective publications everything is narrative and the other book is investigations in infrastructure um, for people that aren't aware of Subjectively Objective, um, they are very cool. Noah is a kick-ass curator and bookmaker and designer. Yes, yes. Get a chance to take a look at their stuff. Definitely do it. Um, if you like boring photography, it's for you. <laughs> so <laughs> Contemplative. So, contemplative photography, not boring. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I, I got their first um, like kind of full curated book thing, the... Um, vernacular landscape or vernacular oh, yeah. of landscape the little mm -hmm. tiny thing very cool book that kind of got uh, that kind of put me in that downhill spiral in this style of photography mm -hmm. so the photos that you have in these two books um are selections from your series that you titled you are nowhere uh tell me a bit about that project con conceptually and all that jazz uh yeah so you are nowhere was uh the first thing that i made outside of uh, school after getting my uh, bachelor's in fine arts. And um, it, was, it was structured around uh, kind of like the, an interpretation of like the traditional American dream, which I, I always took as the road trip, um, like the open road, just, uh, you know, that kind of freedom um, in general with like uh, just being able to drop what you're doing and, and like – kind of like leisurely, you know, activity, right? Like you, you, we can afford to take 
vacations here and that's kind of like the dream and I, I always felt like that would <laughs> would happen to me after college as well I could be able to take these these incredible road trips and that's actually one of the things that I did uh, like right after school was uh, uh, I took a road trip BMX related mainly uh, after college with a group of buddies we drove um, to Portland Oregon from uh, Chicago and we just did it straight. It was uh, <clears throat> it was like thirty two hours or something like that. And we just took turns driving. We never stopped. And one of our other BMX buddies was out there. So the main purpose of the trip was was riding bikes. But what came out of that was a very like a a much more like deeper uh, interest in like like road trip as me as as a medium. Like I think Joshua Dudley Greer talked about it when. Um, and for his book, uh, somewhere along the line, because his that whole entire book is just again, it's like a road trip uh, or many road trips that he took, and he collected images from those. Where this was like a very intense two weeks that I took after college, um, and and I made a bunch of work there, but I didn't actually compile all the images for a few years um, after that. So it was, so uh, you are nowhere is more uh, like maybe 2010 to 2014 or 15, I think most of the images uh, were made. Um, and yeah, so so just like that idea of travel um, and, and freedom in general, but also uh, going to those kinds of like touristy destinations, the tourist spots and looking beyond them and not always like, uh, not always like going immediately for the, the easy image, but like kind of going around the periphery and, and investigating a little more versus uh, just, you know, like the, the, the immediately uh, evident. Um, so, so I think a lot of that, and I still do that nowadays is like when I'm, when I go out to shoot, I usually just choose like a direction, right? I just, I'll just get in my car and be like, okay, I'm going West today and I'll just start driving. And, and then like wherever, like, I'll just, I'll just end up stopping at something that uh, piques my interest or if the light's right, then I'll just explore that, that spot for un until I feel satisfied and then move on. But yeah, that's, uh, that's mostly how uh, that, that series came about. And it kind of, I was going on a mini road trips for those few years after never, never going on a big one, like uh, to Portland again until much later. And, and yeah, that's, that's where that, uh, that body work came from. I like your I, your method of just kind of choosing a cardinal direction. Mm -hmm. That's something that I, I've dabbled in a few different common ways of choosing how to shoot from exactly that to uh, a digital dart throw of dropping Street View randomly on Google oh, Maps. Yeah. Just like take the guy over Massachusetts, put him down and figure out where that is. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I, I really feel that like most people at some point whether uh, at some point in their life, I feel like they should all all go on some kind of large trip like that. Um, and of course, you know, finances are a really important consideration for that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only the only reason that I was able to do that is because uh, I I knew that we were going to be staying with a friend out in Portland. So, like, there's no there's no way I was going to be able to afford that after college. But, I, yeah, I completely agree. Like, you have to go on a trip like that, especially like. Especially at like uh, kind of you know pivotal or like kind of transformative moments in your life, like like for me it was I had just graduated, uh, so I felt like I kind of needed like a like a recalibration, you know, like like this was gonna be like this will be the bookend or uh, or the beginning of of the rest of my life here after this. So I wanted to like kind of like start it with with something like that. Yeah, yeah. When when I went on my like all similar ish trip, it was slightly it was maybe half the length in hours. Um, a bunch of photographer friends of, and my and myself went to um, we went to Grand Teton National Park, um, oh, nice Rocky Mountain National Park, Yellowstone, um, and Devil's Tower, and we spent very little money on that entire trip. Like mm -hmm. I think each of us individually spent no more. Than like 250 bucks oh nice yep. and 
like I think we excluded like buying food and stuff like that. Like we went to get pizza one night and stuff like that. But mm. it was exactly it was a pretty like pivotal point, and that was actually still in college. It was the year before my senior year, and it was it was a pretty pretty intense trip in both good ways and a few bad ways, as you learn. You really get to learn your learn about your friends when you when you go right. on a cross country road trip. When you can't escape them, yeah. <laughs> exactly. This was like nine days for us too, so it yep. was like really condensed. Um, I was still very gung ho into traditional landscape at that point, so mm-hmm. like looking back, I'm like, God damn it, I should have been taking these other pictures when I was in Colorado. But you know, hindsight is always like that. Right. It's it's the same feeling. Like I always I I reflect on that trip a lot and actually uh this was 2017 now so like seven years later that's actually uh i was thinking about it so much that uh uh my well my girlfriend at the time uh that that was like our uh uh engagement uh trip as i we drove we took a much much longer uh and easier time than just 32 hours straight but we drove uh to portland and i and I proposed to her there, so it was like that's like the the like that that moment or that trip with my BMX buddies was was very influential, like just for the rest of my life, really, and, yeah. and like how important it was. And I know, like I I I'd always talked to her about it. I know she was uh, I I didn't know her at the time that I went, but uh, but I always wanted to like take her and show her how special that like that journey was. And and yeah, it's it's really. It really affected me in in ways like where I always feel like maybe maybe it's not a positive way, but I always feel like there's always it, there's always something that I could like go out and be seeing, right? Like I'd always go out and be searching for something, but like you said, like trying to find things locally, I almost feel like that's that's a harder like photographic task for me is to like find something that I'm interested in locally where. I feel like if I if I just drive, even if I drive just like an hour or a half hour somewhere away, like I'll be more interested or more focused on like getting getting away from here. Like that makes me it just it puts me back in that place that I was, you know, on that road trip. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I got, like from your being raised and uh, being around Chicago, suburbs of Chicago, like I'm really familiar with parts of Chicagoland. Mm. Um, and just a quick side note, cause I can't not say it. Chicago pizza is often <laughs> misunderstood, right? <laughs> right. This is, this is unrelated yes. photography, I but it's been grinding my gears. Like, cause... <laughs> yeah. I just had this conversation this week. It like happens all the time. Cause you gotta talk about so, pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, like, I tell my coworkers all the time out here. They think they always think deep dish, right? Deep dish. It's like mm-hmm. a casserole right now. Yes. We love it. It's good. Yep. That's not the people's pizza. Mm-mm. That's not the people's pizza. The mm-hmm. people's pizza is thin crust, tavern style, square cut, sausage, mushroom, and onion pizza. Mm. That is Chicago pizza, my friends. Yep. Yep. Uh, deep dish is special occasion. Get it out of your head that deep dish is the only Chicago pizza. Because if you want good pizza, go to Rosangela's on the south yeah. end of Chicago. Go somewhere <laughs> like that, and yep. you're going to get some of the best pizza ever. I ha- sorry, I had to get that out of there. It's actually it's fu- it's funny that you say that because uh, I uh, that's how I met my wife. Actually, is my first job was at a pizza place that I that I grew up eating at like my entire life. Like every Friday night was pizza night. We would get pizza from this this uh, place called Belzano's right behind my house. Yep. And I would I I would walk out my back gate. And, and just walk the pizza, you know, well, in the summer, I would be able to, like, go pick it up and just walk it home and still be warm because that's how close it was. And, and and then I ended up working there. That was my first job. And then I ended up meeting my now wife there. So, like, pizza yeah. is is integral to just Chicago history and my history, my personal history in general. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, to get back on track, um, this is not yeah. being cut out. This is very important. It's good. Yes, um, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> So uh, with your time being in the suburbs of Chicago, um, the, I mean, I, I know you're really familiar with this like kind of monotony that exists in suburbia. Um, so whenever you're traveling around the country for this project and any of your work, um, what did you ever find yourself being drawn to the most? And looking back, uh, do you think that you would have been drawn to some of the same things that you shot then or would it be a little bit different looking back now? I think uh, the main things that I was drawn to on that trip was like uh, 
like what, whatever surprised me really because i i mean yeah like you said the like the monotony of of the suburbs of the sprawl uh can can really be oppressive and it's in and kind of you know it it, it doesn't it doesn't always foster uh, inspiration when you're trying to like make new work. So, so basically, anything past after the Mississippi was just really inspiring, and and I felt like I I couldn't like capture it fast enough, right? Like we were like yeah. whenever we would stop, even if it was at like a gas station or something, like I was just I was just voraciously like shooting anything and everything, and and I realize now like I. I I shoot I shoot digital. Uh, I did shoot some film um, during college, and and then it just even even back then, even like you know ten years ago, it was it was getting extremely expensive. So it was hard to it was hard to keep going with that. But digital, I also felt was more kind of like I always felt it was more intuitive, and I like that. I like that. It's not always uh, the the most uh, agreed upon, but I do like the instant gratification of like like shooting yeah. a photo and then like seeing it and knowing like okay I did actually capture what I was seeing or whatever. But anyway, so I was always I, I was shooting a lot during that trip, and I wish looking back like I would have slowed down and like just looked more and and been more present in a lot of those moments. Like I think I think I I, I was successful in. Uh, in some instances, but like, uh, there was, there was many times like we, there's one day where we drove through the, uh, the redwoods, um, after Portland, we drove down to San Francisco and then back up to, to Chicago, just taking a different route. And, uh, I remember that day in the, in the redwoods, it w- it just felt like, it felt like a blur looking back on it, but I, I just wish like I would have like slowed down. I did get one image that I really like. I still like uh, from that day. I, actually, I don't have it on my my website anymore. But um, originally, it was in the cut for uh, uh, "You Are Nowhere," but it was just like a broken redwood tree. And I, I wish mm. like I wish like I would have just yeah slowed down, especially on that day. But um, you know, I, I think I'm much better at that now, uh, even though that I shoot digital and i like i said i get that instant gratification i still i still like kind of uh shoot like i was with film like where i i'm considering much more than just like uh what's the term like spraying (laughs) spraying and praying just like hoping that you get some yeah (laughs) yeah yeah i i think that's like you know looking at this work i think that I think that's something that a lot of us can relate to. I think is this what I'm trying to say is that like on every trip that I've gone on, like I, I one of my worst fears is driving past something that I want to photograph and not being able to stop. Like I think that that is kind of like in conjunction with like the the need to slow down that I think um, a lot of us really come to that same realization over time. Uh, I sure as hell learned that in my grad school time. Mm-hmm. Um Ironically being told I need to shoot more and the whole time I'm like I'm shooting photos all the time, right? But yeah, that's how it always goes It's not it's never enough, but then it always feels like too much as well. Like like what do I exactly? Do with yeah. all this? <laughs> like my um, I've only been shooting photos this year like post graduation and more like post Chico review like I've been shooting photos like very Infrequently like mm-hmm. just this September is when I started really taking pictures again more commonly yeah, I say, I say that too. Actually, kind of going off of that is uh, is I I've, I believe I've forced myself at least the last couple of years to uh, really appreciate those those moments when you can go out and shoot because because like uh, yeah I don't always have you know like I don't always have <laughs> it's it's funny I, I love watching the like uh, I was just watching uh, what's his Polly B. Uh, walkie-talkie on YouTube like he always interviews like street photographers and they were just talking about like how some of them have like they just go out and shoot like six hours a day like five days a week and I just that sounds like incredible but it also it it makes me appreciate that when I do have that time to go out like really like focus and like you know use it wisely right like just like yeah yeah, it's, it's it, it makes it. I don't want to say that it makes like you, like it, it doesn't make my work better. But I think that I like am more 
present in the moment and I can I can make better work if I'm in that mindset versus like distracted or or like I'm rushing like I can't you can't rush when you're going out like I I've been on some uh me and me and a couple of my buddies like we'll go out every saturday morning but sometimes i'll know like oh i gotta be back in the afternoon to do something where like those kinds of those kinds of shoots like i'm always like okay i'm just i can't i can't focus right now it needs to be like the whole day or, or nothing or like or just like i need to be able to focus right now and and that's it yeah and it's like that's something um something that i've been doing lately is uh, whenever um, I'm out with friends or out with my girlfriend, I'll have my small camera bag with me, just kind of always ready. Like if some kind of idea comes up, like there are a couple moments that I was like, I can't not take certain pictures. So there's one I have of her hand just kind of in the water, just kind of like limp like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I was, yeah, I was a few beers in when I shot that. So it's a <laughs> little bit off center. So I had to crop it a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> but that that, exactly. that moment was one that I was like, you know, this is why I bring my camera with me yep. everywhere. Not because I'm taking pictures all the time, but rather because it's a low profile package mm-hmm. that I, I'm always able to grab my camera. And when I'm out taking photos for an intentional trip that's going to take a few hours or most of the day, I still might even have the exact same small camera bag rather than my big honking backpack because right. I really only use one lens and things like that. Well, you never know when that you never know when that moment's going to hit either, right? It's like like yep. that you see that you see her hand, yeah, you get that you get that urge. <laughs> I have yep. to I have to capture this, yeah. <laughs> Even if you are slightly intoxicated. Right. So, back to the the you are nowhere work um mm-hmm. and kind of how like how you worked with um what you came across and everything. Um a lot of the photos kind of fall into two different kind of aesthetic categories which are kind of your midday midday very neutral lighting um and then um many of them are uh night photos or appear as night photos even if they're not actually at nighttime they're like those darker images so when you were looking back at this work after the trip after you've kind of gone through all the photos what was your method of kind of developing the concept and you know selecting what images you wanted to use I, uh, I think, uh, the, the concept came, well, the concept came mainly from, like I said, that, uh, the initial trip, but the, uh, the photos, I wanted this feeling of, of like all seasons really. Cause in, Ch- in Chicago, uh, we have, we have all the seasons here, right? Like yes. it's not, it's not, uh, like the South or, uh, out West, but we, so I felt like I needed some kind of uh, representation of, of all of those. So I think, uh, and honestly, uh, when I was younger, at least during that time, I was not very much a, a morning person. So like that beautiful, that beautiful light that I'm now like always attracted to, and I'm willing to get up for, I, I found myself shooting more often in the afternoon or at night. And that's probably why that's that's why that aesthetic came around, I think, is kind of just like the younger photographer in me and like making images when when I could or when I was awake. Right. Versus versus now the the older photographer in me where like I I know when I want to get up and I like I even I find myself now. Actually, it's it's funny. I know you, you talk about Google Maps all the time, but I. I, I don't know how many hours I just like scout locations on Google Maps yeah. and actually actually my buddy uh, uh, Dave Bischoff um, just went on a, a photo trip with him and he uh, he showed me this app and you can actually like you can actually it's like an overlay that you can put it on Google Maps and you can see like where the sun's gonna be at a particular time like on uh, like on a particular day as well so so I don't I don't I, I don't go that far but I do like to like kind of scout and really th- I think about light that uh, coming full circle I just think about light a lot more now than I did uh when I was younger and I think a lot of that a lot of those connections are like the uh the 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 aesthetic of of uh you are nowhere it was more kind of just like a culmination after making work for a few years and putting it together and and more about the subject matter, I think, than like, like now, now I really do think about subject matter plus light. But then it was more just like, this, this feels right 
along with these images um and that's and that's why like i kind of put them all together in that in that fashion that really does like come across with kind of how like even if the the sequence that's on your website isn't let like, let's say it, if it were to be a book like it may not necessarily be the sequence but the flow between the night or golden hour blue hour images into the ones that are midday whether it's cloudy or not kind of things mm-hmm. like it it has a good rhythm and flow to it i think that the subjects that you selected for it um really help contribute to exactly that and the way that you approach a lot of these subjects i think is really interesting because you're like you've mentioned before like you're not going straight for like the obvious subject or the obvious composition um like the 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 real obvious examples are like old cars, power plants, swimming pools, signs, you name it, right? Uh, we've all done it. And I think that the way that you managed to approach those those subjects uh, worked really well because it's not necessarily at the time of day that they're usually shot at or at the angle or the composition, all those different attributes. It's not necessarily what you would expect, which I think is what makes it really good. That kind of makes me think of the Alex Soth quote of he like he says I like to ride up right right up to the edge of cliche. I think that looking at a body of work like this, um, it's like it's hard to avoid those subjects just by nature of the road trip as the medium, like you talked about before. When uh, I guess I'm curious about what your thoughts are on on that kind of mentality of that Alex Soth idea of writing right up to the edge of cliche and how you approach your scenes. It's funny. I just, I just mentioned, uh, uh, Dave, uh, Bischoff and, uh, the, me and him and another photo, photo buddy of ours. Uh, we went on a road trip from, from here. We went to St. Louis and then, uh, over to little rock, Arkansas, just cause we'd never gone into Arkansas. And, uh, and the whole time we're talking about like, okay, we're not going to stop for old cars. Okay. No matter what, how many we see, we're not stopping. <laughs> and of course, of course we don't even make it out of Illinois and we find, well, it was, it was this one, it was, uh, uh, it was called like Dave's old cars. So of course, like Dave is in the car. We're like, we got to stop. We have to stop. Yeah. And, and so I think the and then we, we started talking about it a little bit, but I think like, go with your gut like i always feel like if you have if you have a feeling like even if it is cliche even if it is like something that's been done a million times it's always going to be your own interpretation of that cliche right so like it like if we really felt compelled to stop and take images of those uh those old cars like i think you should just follow that feeling but also i feel like some of my most interesting experiences at least photographically have kind of stemmed from stopping for something that you see initially and and being interested but then like exploring a little bit more beyond that like for instance there's this uh uh, town and it's it's over by starved rock where that uh national park is or the the state park but it's called oglesby illinois and there's this old uh like concrete uh factory there and and from the facade, it's like, it's very, you know, like I, I was just drawn to it because it was this giant like monolith of a structure and I just wanted to go explore. But then beyond, once you get past like that, there's all this, this entire like complex of buildings and it goes like right up to the Vermilion River, which runs through that town. And, and so it's just like, that's one of those moments uh, where like you, you stop for something, you see something that you initially were responding to, but then, but then you end up making a bunch of other images beyond it just because you explored a little more. So I, I feel like those cliches and, and also, um, you talk about cliche. I was thinking about, um, Bruce Gilden. I think he talked about this, but he said, you know, you go to a, you go to an event or like, he likes to be on the like periphery. We talked about periphery a little bit earlier, but you go to the periphery of an event where like the event might be the, the cliche or whatever, right? Like, but yep. like, that's the thing that you really wanted to, sh- to shoot or like the reason that you're, you're there uh, with your camera, but going and exploring like around the surrounding area, that's, that's probably where the most interesting images are. So, so yeah, like I always feel like I, I was, I was fighting it for a while like not like not stopping we're not we're not stopping for this old car we're not doing it and now and now i feel like okay i'm gonna 
I'm just gonna follow it and and just yeah. There, there there will probably be something that I will be enjoy making or at least even even the experience of getting out and looking around. Like I can't like I feel like that's the that's that's really like the the whole my entire mantra right now as a photographer is like I just want to go and like look at the world. Like I just want to go out and explore and and see what I see, see what see what kind of people I meet or what I run into and. And then, like, if I make a photograph from that, then that's even better. But like, I always, I, I think now, yeah, just, just follow your, follow your feelings, and, and it'll, you'll make good work. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And kind of back to your uh, reference to the Starved Rock area, for um, those Illinois photographers that are completely unaware that there are canyons in North Central right. Illinois. Yeah. Uh, go there. It's Beautiful. very cool. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a seasonal place. Not seasonal for summer. It's seasonal for fall. Actually, and uh, so Starved Rock is nice, but have you ever been to Matheson? Which is I have, yes. Mat- Matheson, that is by far the superior of the two uh, parks over there. But they just recently uh, redid the parking lot over there, so there's there's well, lots very of good. parking. Very good, yeah. Yeah, just a just a beautiful yeah. canyon, and then a massive sprawl of asphalt, you know, right next. To it. Yep, that's <laughs> so that's what we need though. in America. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Nothing more American than that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, but. Your uh, your your comment about kind of the surrounding area, like I've driven um driven on thirty nine north, you know, seeing that structure, that vertical mm-hmm. structure yep. um for the concrete plant all the time, and I'm always intrigued by it. Yeah, that's something that I think that a lot of people um may not necessarily know um right away is like areas like those popular tourist areas have some incredibly interesting incredibly interesting things around them. And like the Oglesby, Ottawa area is one of those areas that summer and fall are like their entire economy. But if you go there any time of year and just drive around, you're going to find some really, really interesting scenes that yep. sometimes look like they're just taken straight out of like Louisiana versus sometimes they, you know, you're back in your regular Midwest. And then it's a really interesting landscape in that specific part of Illinois that also reminds me of... um northwest illinois by savannah um another yeah. canyon area um right on the mississippi river um, oh yeah that's a great what's that isn't there uh a... the state park there is the mississippi palisades oh right right I, yes i learned that name comes from the old um arm, armory kind of like uh weapons depot thing um right. which is always funny seeing like a, a hyundai palisade and wondering how they named that car because it's like Palisade is literally just like a type of defense. <laughs> it's like it's like a structural defense. It's like yeah. what? Uh, anyway, there's a uh, the Sabula Sabula Iowa is the spot. Like you think you you take Savannah and then there's that bridge. Yeah, Sabula is like a it's a peninsula. It's not an island, but it's yeah, it's yeah. A, That's an incredible spot right there. Yeah. There's a YouTube video where I go and take pictures in Savannah. It's from like four years ago. Oh, really? Oh. COVID was still a thing. Um, <laughs> not pu- not plugging my YouTube videos when I was young and naive. Uh, I'm gonna immediately go watch <laughs> that right after. This. <laughs> it's a it's a little fun. I I bitch about um, people up there not wearing masks and everything because it was still like oh, pretty yeah. intense oh. COVID time too. Oh man, driving through that that was that was some very strange experiences shooting during COVID because because yeah I would like I would be. I was always wearing a mask, but then you would go like and stop at uh, like a gas station or something, and it was it was like mask optional or like you would see the big like no mask like symbols on the doors. It, yeah, it was yeah, strange. Very very bizarre times. Yeah. Um, kind of shifting gears a bit into um, uh, a slightly more recent work, your uh, present tense work. You describe that work as a study in the duality of imagery in the in a way that our political points of view make us see things from these opposite perspectives, and uh, that's like a really poignant and real perspective that a lot of us Americans, most of us Americans, are really acutely aware of these days. Um, so, was this idea similar in that it kind of came about after? after some time or was it something that you more deliberately sought out making work about i think uh for for the most part it definitely came about as a reaction to the time right like i like Mm -hmm. like most of us uh i was very surprised uh by 
the results of you know everything that was was happening uh, during that moment in time, and uh, I kind of the only thing that I that felt comfortable for me was to maybe like investigate like my my well my country like as in general and 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 it was it was very sub- uh, I say investigate but it was very subjective like practice where I just felt like I needed to go out and kind of experience and uh and just see the country more because maybe it, I felt like I'm missing things or like it, it didn't it didn't seem I, I don't know I felt I felt out of the loop a little bit so I needed to go and just just make work and I felt uh I I kind of took the same approach as uh, as you are nowhere where I go out and and just explore. But also this time it was more about like like I was I, I feel like I would go out and, and live just live my life and just make photos like as I'm as I'm living my life during these times uh, and kind of uh, try to like unintentionally seek out some of those like the 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 political uh or uh yeah just like the political kind of imagery that that was ever present in in anywhere we looked like everything was just politicized it still it still kind of is but uh, i felt like i felt like i couldn't make work without it and and i without it being present in the work and uh, i also felt that if i didn't I I couldn't, I I felt like there was no way around it. So I just wanted to kind of embrace it a bit and, uh, and wherever I was, whatever I was attracted to when I was out on the road or, or just, just living in general, like I, I felt like I would make the work as I would go and just collect it, uh, after the fact. So I, I think it was much more about time. And then by the end of it, I, after realizing, okay, I have, I have a group of images here. Then it was more deliberate and I would kind of like go to certain spots maybe. Um, and like, like for the instance at the end of it, I, there was, uh, I was, I driven past it a bunch of times, but there's, uh, this, I think they call it the shrine in Indiana. And it's, it's like the 10 commandments that are kind of like made into this, uh, like uh, walking path that you can walk through, and I, I just felt like it was, uh, it was an interesting, like it, it, there had to be something interesting there. So, I, so like those are the types of things when I say like it was getting more deliberate. Like I would, uh, I would, I, one of those images ended up being in in present tense, uh, but I felt like I would kind of go to places uh, or events where I felt like okay, something might happen here. I might see something here that will work with this theme. Um, maybe it'll be a bit more on the nose uh but but maybe there will also be some subtlety uh in in you know in this uh that i could that i could find uh at the event yeah yeah exactly and i think that you know if i were to compare present tense to you are nowhere um just based on their time proximity almost like you know just kind of turned like one 2014-ish is when that one ended and then 2015 2016 happened and most right. of us in america were very aware of that strange time yeah <laughs> um but to compare the like the the structure of both projects you know the we got the landscapes that have a really similar kind of um visual aesthetic to them that same kind of often midday um or kind of like an airy look that depending on the scene um but then we start to have more reference to people and slightly different more tighter compositions compared to that of you are nowhere and i think that's a really interesting shift in how these two compare leading one into the other even though there's no formal portraits in in this in the work you have on your website there are often photos kind of shot from behind obscuring people's identities uh what were your thoughts in um making photographs of people or referencing people that use that kind of styling i think uh, I was going more for uh, like this this anonymity, like American anonymity in general. Like uh, I, yeah. I believe a, f- a portrait says a portrait basically says everything. You know, like a, a, yeah. a face can tell you you can see any and everything that you want in there. But I also feel like no, uh, like a human figure without a face, you can you can put more into that as well you can kind of fill that 
that void or that faceless figure with your, with your own thoughts. And that's going back to that duality of image, right? Like how we could, as a, it really felt like as a culture then and, and now, like we can see one thing, two people can see one thing and it could be completely different interpretations of that. So I, I wanted to go for more like just kind of like a more of an interpretive uh, view of a person versus like a portrait could could maybe fill or like it, it could in, it could be have too much intention. I feel like sometimes portraits. So I wanted to a- allow the the viewer or the audience to uh, interpret more um, in general and. Looking back now, maybe uh, some portraits would have. Been, and, well, and in my my newer work, I am I am definitely adding faces because I feel like I'm going back kind of on my own mentality, at least during that uh, that project where I felt like uh, a face could say too much. Now I feel like maybe a face at at a certain point in a in a project where it's not there isn't that many portraits can really like be poignant so i i feel like uh at least during that project i didn't want to be specific i wanted this american ambiguity to to really come to the the forefront versus versus yes saying too much yeah exactly i think that you know there is that pretty pretty good balance i would say of you know images that are pretty you know heavy-handed um that are very like clear about what it's about versus others that are much more subtle that we talked about. And I think that, you know, the way that you approached the portraits really helped contribute to exactly that theme. Um, so I think that's why that works uh, really well for how you approach Cause there, you can have a million different political projects like that, that are so heavy handed. It goes into like journalism as one would expect. Um, but then other work that is much more, um, in this case, much more poetic about the matter. And I think that that's why the way that you approached it really, really helped communicate that theme to the uh, to the viewers. And it reminds me of a previous guest's work, um, previous guest being over two years ago, mm-hmm. uh, was uh, Brendan Burton in his book, American Poetry, and uh, very different stylistically, but um, both this body of work and his American Poetry have distinct usage of signage and his is much more like handmade signs you know things very much like found objects but in a photograph versus yours are actually more referencing um almost like the commercial side of things businesses uh recognizable companies and stuff like that i'm thinking of like the the cnn logo uh, photo Mm -hmm. to um like really like starkly used um uh american flags and things like that and I think that that's a really interesting way to approach usage of uh, signs, symbols, and all that. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm cu- curious if you are, if you kind of consider this work to be an ongoing project, or if you think that it's um, something that really was time specific. Uh, I, it's definitely time specific. But yeah, I think the like signs and words, like just like faces, kind of they they almost like it's less about the image then right and it's more about like a specifically signs it's it just it becomes the sign like the image is yep. the sign so i i i always the one like one photographic like uh instance that i will find uh in my in my my career my my photographic life is i'm going to find a person who is actually putting up like one of those signs, like the the sign, uh, particularly in um, in present tense, that that got just it, it's it's so it was so strange to find. It's the one that says uh, God is pro life, and it's it's a huge huge sign in the middle of like it, it was the middle of a cornfield. Well, it was it was harvest time, so there's no corn left. But it's just I really want to like see that event happening like i want like i'd love to ask the question like how much time like was put in like the the f just the effort involved it's so it's so strange and it's the same with like brendan's work that whole that whole body of work is like everyone is like taking the time to make these signs and like where like they're basically like i think that's another part of american culture that kind of 
we talk about uh, some of the images being heavy handed, some some images being subtle is that's like American culture in general, right? It's like in some aspects we are we are extremely heavy handed. We wear our beliefs on our sleeves, on our you know, bumper stickers, signs in, in the middle of fields, like but also that's there's complexity and, and simplicity to things that uh, that you know, it, it, there's there's a lot of nuance, but then there's also just, you know, straight in your face kind of kind of mentality. So like I I just uh I, that that would be very interesting to like I I want to find that I I will find it um, but yes um, yeah. uh, I think yeah both of those projects were very and same thing with uh, with my my newer project uh, uh, Eternity Eternity it's uh, I believe they're very time based so present tense specifically was very specific to the to that time twenty sixteen to twenty twenty ish uh is when i was made those um and then present tense was was also like personally specific when it comes to time and that was at post college for me and kind of still having like the you know youthful dreams of of just driving around and making yeah. images and then uh and then yeah like the my new my new work uh eternity eternity is is kind of again like it's about time and I tr- I'm trying to make it more like like about the future so maybe maybe like uh, no you are nowhere is is like the old American dream like old old ideals present tense is present and then eternity eternity is kind of like the future yeah yeah I'm really curious about this newer work because um, your social media sharing um, a lot of black and white work these days, not entirely, but a lot of black and white work. Um, and I'm curious, is the is the new project that you've titled Eternity Eternity, is that in the black and white side of things or is it is that just kind of a unrelated situation? It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely in the black and white. Eternity Eternity is all uh, black and white, but uh, yeah, I, I felt like after uh, making present tense, I kind of needed like a new, a new perspective. So I, I started, I started shooting black white. And I, I, I know that, uh, I was certainly influenced by a few things that I had consumed, uh, like, like actually kind of during making a uh, present tense still, but one of them, one of them was, uh, Matthew Getty, Getty Tempo's Jasper. Like after yeah. seeing that work, I, not, I mean, I don't like to say that I was influenced that heavily, but after seeing it, it was really just, it was profound. I mean, the work, the work in general is, is, is a miracle, but I feel like it, seeing it in black and white and realizing like, you know, some of these, like seeing some of those images and knowing that they are probably vivid colors that, that he was seeing, but the way that it was portrayed in the book and and their muted tones just really uh, made me think about my own work and how I've always struggled with with color in general. I always felt like I, I never I never always felt like comfortable like getting images the way that I saw. Like that's my that's like one thing that I just I've always wanted is like a camera that like just knows how I see, right? Like I don't even have yeah. to think about the gear. It just, it just like, this is just what I see and I don't have to think about post-production or, you know, post or anything like that. So uh, I realized like, oh, black and white, I could just, I don't even have to think about color. It's just, I'm just thinking about light and subject matter. So, but then the other thing really that, that I saw at that time was uh, uh, Roma by uh alfonso Caron, that was i remember that like specifically being like wow this is just thinking about mexico city in the 1970s and like how like that must have been the most colorful you know time or city in general and to shoot it in black and white like that was just incredible so so that yeah that just made me think about my own work and 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 then i just started shooting more black and white it wasn't like fully committed to it but but then i started actually accumulating work that began to be to become uh eternity eternity and then yeah i've just been like into been sharing I, a lot of the stuff that i share is kind of like like b-sides to eternity yeah. eternity uh so so yeah i've been very interested in in just black and white in general and i will say like my uh 
my one buddy, uh, he was shooting a lot of, uh, of black and white film. And I, I was thinking about getting back into it, but I was I just, no, can't do it. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's easier to just hit that monochrome. <laughs> honestly, yeah. <laughs> and that's honestly like your, idea, your approach to using um, Instagram as like a place to put B-sides, I think is a, right, right. A, like probably the best possible way for an artist to effectively use social media is like, mm-hmm. yeah, show like the actual images show just kind of the work in progress stuff and right. I, I forget uh which guest i was talking to um about this but an idea of like if there's there's certain work that we do kind of want to hold the cards close to our chest and like be be careful about sharing it mm. um i have one project that i i made between 2017 and 2021 when i moved to massachusetts and that's a body of work that i haven't really shared with more than like two or three people and it's almost entirely interiors Mm-hmm. And um, that's a body of work that I'm still just like wrestling with. Yeah, I mean, I like the I like your approach to how you um, kind of found black and white through, of course, the like the inspiration from others is kind of like almost to be expected for most artists. Um, that's kind of where I'm at and why I kind of shifted into black and white. You know, got out of grad school. I don't want to think about color anymore. And I was talking with one of my friends yesterday. Um, and he was saying that the the way that uh, you know shooting in color for so long and thinking in color and making these substantial bodies of work in color is actually like a really effective way to learn how to shoot in black and white because you're kind of seeing these things you're seeing the compositions differently because you know you, sometimes you'll throw a color filter on there or whatever but you're learning a lot about how to approach a scene with the reality of color, assuming you're not colorblind, and um, learning how to navigate that, and then switching it to black and white, I've personally found that the blue filter is my best friend. Right, um, yes. It, like, holy crap, like, 80% of my black and white photos on digital have a blue filter on them. Hmm. But your uh, your title of Eternity Eternity, I know that you took that that title um, as a reference from the, the famous book War of the Worlds, if people haven't read it or at least seen the good movie, then <laughs> you, got, you gotta. It's yeah. incredibly important and influential. At yeah. least see the movie. Um, so the the work is really about this kind of complicated relationship uh, uh, between belief and, you know, belief and American people. And, you know, like from like political values to personal values, and of course religion kind of comes up. And religion did come up a, a bit in um, present tense as well in some of the signage. Um, I guess I'm really curious about for this approach to that complex relationship with belief, what you were most interested in making this work about. Uh, so Eternity Eternity kind of spawned from this, uh, well, I'll, I'll start with this. It started with uh, the pandemic uh, in general, and a lot of that work was made during the, the pandemic, during lockdown. Uh, it it kind of spawned from this idea of, it started off with uh, this notion of small town science fiction, and it kind of morphed into like a social science fiction and how um, belief in general was kind of like whatever you wanted it to be, right? I mean, I mean belief belief is very personal. Obviously it's, a, it's a, uh, something that changes for everyone, but, belief in certain like institutions and things like that I felt like were accepted and kind of like everyone may or you know most people agreed upon and and all of that felt like it uh it it changed uh especially when we we're faced like as a world with you know a common kind of threat um which is which is again like as it was uh so all, all these kind of ideas came out of the lockdown because as 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 many of us did i, I was i was reading a lot more um i had never read war, war of the worlds I had, I had i had seen the movies um but never actually dug in and put in the time the title itself comes from uh a uh there's a line uh from this this blind man and he's standing in this cart uh just yelling eternity eternity towards the heavens um as like this whole the whole throng of people are 
moving through the streets of London as they exit us away from the uh, the aliens. And I just thought that that was like, it was really, it was, it was poignant because it just felt kind of like all of us, like just screaming in our own carts, like, you know, wh what do we do really? Like, what can we, what can we do to help, uh, or, you know, stop this or be safe? And it was, so the, the, the title has changed many times too. I've had a bunch of different titles like over the years for it, but I felt like that one really stuck with me and maybe reading War of the Worlds uh, like so late like, because I've always loved sci-fi in general, but it it felt like that one was, uh, like, reading it at that time. Because there's a lot of other themes, like, during one point, and the, the main character is, is stuck in a home. Uh, not his own home, but, like, he's, he's trapped in a house with another person, and they kind of, like, have to survive as this, this threat is just outside their door. Some other themes that come through the book that I didn't realize, like, as as I was reading it, I was making the work and then reading it, and it kind of like it was it was like coming together really really strangely like cohesively. But there's also like at one point they the, the aliens like they spread this uh, they like they're making the habitat their own right, and there's these red leaves that like grow all over everything like these vines that go out out all over everything, and um, and I found myself shooting a lot of. Uh, like in the in the project, there's a couple images where there's the whole landscapes just like covered in you know you can see like you can see uh, structures beneath them, but they're just covered in in vines. So it's like these things are like closing in um, on us, uh, like nature in general. And I uh, so it's just uh, those types of themes were kind of coming around. Uh, as I was reading the book, as I was kind of trying to wrap up making images uh, for the project. Also, the another thing that was just space exploration in general. I, I, I was thinking about this too as, as I was reading it and making the work is like uh, that book was made at the in the 1800s or uh, um, right at the end of uh, the 19th century. and. Uh, they were thinking the H.G. Uh, Wells was thinking about space, and uh, as I was reading it, like Jeff Bezos was doing, you know, like having like joy rides in space on his yeah. on his spaceship, and same with uh, what's his name from Virgin Airlines or what or Virgin Records, uh, uh, Richard Branson. Or, uh, so it's like it's like yeah, there's like rich people going on joy rides in space, and I'm reading about you know like these aliens that someone from a hundred years ago th thought about uh, it was just it was a lot of like these conflicting like mix of like times like future and past and that's that's uh like i was mentioning earlier like i feel like i i wanted i always think about like black and white in terms of like flashbacks when it comes to like cinema right like that like that's the the trope you use of black and white as a as a way to show the past but i was kind of thinking about black and white as like the future Mm -hmm. um but like or like this mix of like past and past and future so yeah so i i feel like it's it's very close to being done i think it i think the the image is done i just i i, I tinker too much i think you asked earlier about like it is do you believe uh present tense and um uh you are nowhere is done and I feel like I I could just keep tinkering or adding images to it, but I have to like cut it off at some point. I think I'm at that point now where I just like I might be repeating myself, uh, so I need to, yeah, that's it, it's done. <laughs> yeah, and I think with both uh, both those first projects too is like there was a pretty there's a pretty clear like break off time for shooting for that mm -hmm. part of your life too, um, versus this one, you know who knows how long it may actually be end up being shot for but then the editing phase you know like I'm, i think about one of my undergrad professors his um his first uh real published photo book um with care hair was not published until i think seven years after he finished it for finished shooting the project for his mfa so wow. he did all these uh four by five or eight by ten i forget which one one of the large formats mm. um traveling to different towns throughout the country and he didn't actually publish that until I think 2015 or 2017. Wow! It was it was an odd number, I'm pretty sure. 
That's a long time. Yeah, I, I'm finding that too. Is like spending so much time with these images. Like I've shared them. I've shared them with uh, with some people. Like getting feedback throughout, like the la- over the last year, and uh, and yeah, it's like eventually you just like I can't. I can't look at. It. I don't think I have an, like an objective feeling anymore for these. I need someone else to tell me how it is. <laughs> I think um, your your way of using black and white for this project to reference the future, I think that, you know, no matter what photography will always be referencing time, but the way that an image looks will reference time in different ways. Um, and I think, you know, color is often kind of referencing the present or a specific time, you know, um, and I'm really like watering down these theories. Right. But. Um, with black and white, I feel like is one of those ones that, you know, people will often think about the past, like you mentioned, but I think that using it as a tool to reference the future is kind of doing the exact same thing as referencing the past because it's, it's an imperfect thing and memory as well as anticipation right. are these fuzzy things. Um, and rela- you know, using the war of the worlds reference and kind of like vehicle of inspiration of sort that. Um, you know, being encountered by this this threat that, you know, for reality, you know, we wound up becoming weirdly divided on certain things. And it's almost like we kind of forgot what happened with, like, swine flu, where we all just kind right. of accepted, like, yeah, this is a real, like, this is an actual problem. Let's, you know, like, actually get this going. That was, I don't remember swine flu being as politicized as COVID, which is right, just well, bizarre. Because also it was far away, right? It was, it yep. wasn't, like, on our on our shores really so i mean it was but it wasn't as uh as as prevalent as uh as yeah the as covid so it's so yeah it's it's interesting like how once things become real like doubt uh also creeps in right like i I think that's yeah i talk about i talk about the the complex relationship that america has with belief because i i think like that's the three the three pillars I keep going back to like the, the trilogy of images, but it's like American dream, American politics, and uh, and then American belief uh, is kind of like those those pillars of, of the projects. But but also like belief and doubt, I think can go hand in hand, and that's really again going back to that that duality that I was searching for uh, in present tense is is also present in uh, in eternity eternity. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just kind of looking at some of the black and white images and thinking about what you were talking about while looking at them. And I mean, they have um, they have a pretty different kind of feeling to them, even though a lot of them are composed very similarly. Like you approach scenes pretty consistently. Um, but I think that like I'm looking specifically at this one of a gravestone that has this kind of like this light off to the side that has this like kind of street coming in. And, you know, it's like something that I usually like shy away from is taking photographs in a, in a cemetery at nighttime, <laughs> specifically at nighttime. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then you know, like the other, other photos in that post of the like the office desk and then the, the creek are like they all have a very similar, even though they're aesthetically different. They have a similar kind of uh, I, I don't know how else to put it, but like a certain similar kind of presence to them almost like you're encountering something foreign even though it's a really familiar subject matter um which i think goes with that you know kind of questioning that you know if you're thinking about the complex relationship with belief weird di- uh that weird dynamic between seeing a familiar object in a like a edited a certain way or certain conditions that defamiliarize it i think are really what help um help that question of you know what are you what do you believe you're seeing i guess is something that is a question that would run through my mind um but i'm excited to see how this work will come along as you as you continue working on it because i think that your your use of the trilogy the pillars of sort um is a really 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 cool way to to approach building your life's body of work with these smaller bodies of work that are interconnected Mm -hmm. yeah um i mean you kind of exactly talked about something that i was anticipating talking about is like what your work has kind of been uh, conceptually over over the years, do you have any anticipation for any of these works to be um, put into a book format? And uh, if you do have any um, like that, you know, is there anything that you're willing to talk about for that idea? Oh yeah, I, that's that is the the goal with uh, 
attorney attorney especially like I, I that is the product I I feel like or uh, or the end goal is is to get that into a uh, um, into a book format uh, I've I've made a, a, a dummy version of it already at least with like I have I have like 80 images that I think are really are really good I mean I, I definitely again like talking talking to people it's it's that's grown and uh, grown and shrunk like a bunch of times, but I feel like this this most recent edit that I have is is really good and and uh, or at least really concise and and kind of uh, it all flows pretty well. Uh, but a book for sure um, would be uh, is is the the goal here. I have I have a couple other. I know we uh, talk about like my life's work i think like my other the other work that i that i like uh or i've been working towards is kind of like event i call it event photography because it's not not maybe typically like like a concert or something like that but like events that happen that uh they only happen like once a year right like this mm-hmm. this other body of work that is completely different um another thing that i would like to make a book um of is uh I, it's called trucker's jamboree right now there's it, yeah, it kind of yeah. spawned from um actually the first time that i heard about it was on that road trip that i went uh right after college so it's, so it's i've been i haven't been working on it but uh i have had the idea since for now like 13 years uh but it's a event that happens at walcott uh uh, Iowa 80 truck stop. It's the world's largest truck stop. They uh, they claim to be, and every year it's a uh, um, it's just like a a truck uh, um, like car show or truck truck show. Like everybody brings their their truck from all over the country, and and all their families come out, and it's just it's a really nice like happy event. But it's one of those things that uh, it only happens once a year. So like I've been shooting it for the last. Well, I've been shooting it for the last technically seven years, but there was one year where they didn't have it because of the pandemic. Um, yeah, I was going to say, what year do you so, think that was? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, yeah, it's like that. I, I have this mix of like projects that uh, that have been building, you know, for for years, but then also some that I've. It's also taken years, but it's. I can only shoot for like like collectively. It's only been like ten days or something like that. Cause yeah, exactly. That's the whole that's the whole time that I have to shoot uh, for it. So it's uh, but yeah. I mean that's the that's that's really the goal is uh, is to get these get these projects uh, into a book format into your hands. Phys- yeah, physical exactly. Medium, yeah. I'm excited to see how that will that that will come out. Um, I when I got my MFA thesis dummies made. So to kind of bring things to a close here, um, we've already talked about a bit about what you've been working on these days. Um, is there anything that's been that uh, is coming up that you would like to share if it's uh, exhibition related or if you're featured in, in anything coming up at all? I'd, I'd love to say so, but uh, not currently. I mean, I've been uh, submitting these projects to a lot of places, so hopefully uh, I'll have I'll have some more good news to share in that regard. But I just the, the last uh, the last couple of years I've been kind of holding off submitting anything. Like I used to, I used to submit a lot, uh, uh, and but now I feel like uh, I just wanted to hunger down and focus on the work. So I think now I have a good a good chunk to start. Uh, yeah, like actually showing people. <laughs> so hopefully, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe we can talk again and I'll have uh, better news. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, like, it's not a bad thing at all to ever just have right. that kind of, you know, sit, sit at home or work in the field and focus mm-hmm. specifically on those things. Because, you know, at a certain point, you know, opportunities will be a little feel a little bit different. And, you know, right. we never really know. Like, I can't really say much on the matter because I'm still so relatively early in my artistic life so that who knows. Um, but that time at the studio focusing on your stuff is mm-hmm. probably way more important than actually getting the work out there. Yeah, um, so where can people find your artwork online? Uh, so you can always check out my uh, my Instagram, but uh, I also have a website, vincentgleamy.com, and uh, that's where most of my 
work is or all my at least important stuff uh the the uh images that i you know want to keep uh collected versus the the b-side the site we were talking about yeah exactly well thank you so much for uh for talking vincent uh it was really awesome getting to know your work a bit more and really deep dive into it um I'm really, really interested in seeing how this new work is going to form over the over the coming un, unknown amount of time um, <laughs> and seeing uh, what what may be what may be coming about in the future with what you send off to people. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for inviting me. And yeah, let me talk about it, everything. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And I will see you in the next one.